mindfulness. It is the awareness that arises when we intentionally pay attention in a kind, open and discerning way. It is a practice and relating to a way of life. Primarily, if we are to consider what mindfulness is generally understood or rather is supposed to be than what is understood, I think I would probably look at the areas of being more aware, number one. Number two, being non-judgmental. Now, when I talk about being non-judgmental, it's like, for example, if you're coming into a room and you're finding different, different people around you. Now, there are some people whom probably you know is very, very similar to your personality. And there will also be some people whom you know will be different from your personality. But how are you willing to approach them? Are you open about meeting them? Are you open to get to know them. Now that is what being non-judgmental, non-reactive. Now when I talk about being non-reactive, it is not that we should just kind of whatever is being told, spoken to us, we show no response. No, that is not what being mindful is. It is about handling a situation based on what is to be handled. Let me give you an example. Supposing you are going to an office. Okay, you're going to an office and you are speaking to the receptionist that you would like to meet somebody. And perhaps the receptionist was busy and is just saying, yeah, you just sit down there, please. I, I, will just, I will just get back to you. And then she continues with her work. Now, naturally, you're not going to be very pleased about it. Five minutes later, you again get back to her and you tell her, Excuse me, I have to meet somebody. Yeah, yeah, I, I will I will get back to you. I will get back to you. And she gets back to her work. Now, how would you be responding in a situation like that? For, for many, the immediate de uh, desire might be, why is she not paying attention to me? I've been here, I've been waiting, I've been spending so much of time, blah, 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 blah. However, if we are to consider certain factors for example, just like how Sakina said, maybe she's busy. Very well. You don't know what is happening in her life. We have no clue about what battles others are waging in their life. And some of the battles may be things that you may never, never imagine them going through, looking at them. So I think what really matters is how we choose to respond. And in this case, how much we would like to ensure we get our, our way at the same time also ensure we tell her politely enough and not cause a scene. Because causing a scene, I personally, unless it's a last resort in any situation, forget the situation. I don't think the situation even merits a, a desire or a requirement for that. But in any situation, creating a scene should be the last resort. In the sense, if you have to, for example, you're getting mugged. There's no point in deciding, now what shall I tell the mugger now? Now that's not possible. So at that time, you will need to definitely make sure you create noise. But other times, making sure you are responding with an assurance, with the confidence of what you want to tell with clarity is paramount. And it is a reflection of mindfulness. So we have three things, like I said, being aware, number two, being not non-judgmental, number three, being non-reactive. And of course, how does mindful help, mindfulness help us? It helps us be better planned for a situation. Now, I'm not saying that we are always planned. No, exactly. I think COVID is also an example of how much that we may plan and things need not go the way we planned. So what we need to remember is still, despite that, there's no point in saying, I'm not going to be planning because, oh, well, you never know what happens. No, now that's not perhaps the most ideal situation. So planning is number one, is something that would help. And number two, how mindfulness can help us is by avoiding negative thinking. Now, what are the benefits of mindfulness here? 
we will actually have to consider some of the main things which comes to our mind the first one is it means reduction of stress the first one because if you are aware if if you are mindful about your surroundings you're mindful about the moment you will realize there is so much that you can feel happy about the fact that you are healthy the fact that you are alive and you are able to be doing what you want to do at that moment maybe you are having your food but you are doing exactly doing what you want to do at that moment of time you are not helpless you have a you have a roof over your head there are lots of things that you can really consider which will also enable you to reduce the stress that you have so number 1 is the the reduction in stress number 2 anxiety number 3 is also a certain i would say a uh, situation where people could have sleeplessness yes sleeplessness is also something which can be controlled to an extent through mindfulness and the other thing according to medical experts what they have been noticed is that high blood pressure is also something which can be controlled to an extent with mindfulness but of course i think the research is still going on so it is yet to be completely affirmed and of course if you look at the improvement here we can talk about attention improvement and i think i've already mentioned about sleep and there's also a possibility of reduction in job burnout when we look at mindfulness again i would i would say that it is um, focused and it is a uh, you know giving attention to their internal or external experiences being more aware of the present and it creates an emotional self awareness and creates awareness also of our negative feelings as well because that's very very important just like we are we are more aware about what is positive in the environment being aware of what is negative is also important but being aware of what is negative and negative thinking is two different things of course so that is something that i i would say that you know we, we need to keep in mind and if we are to look at some structured mindfulness exercises one of them we can talk about is the body scan meditation for example if we are uh, if we are looking at the sitting meditation we can also do the body scan or if you want to be completely lying flat on the ground we are lying flat with the 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 arms outstretched and of course the legs also in a very comfortable posture and then if we are looking through it's called a more body scan meditation because every part of our body we are conscious of it relaxing we are conscious of what it is telling us we are conscious of how much comfort or pain or discomfort is there in any of the regions so i would really like all of you to try it out if not today tomorrow probably the first thing in the morning along with your exercises and you may be surprised to just find out how much your body or rather our body speaks to us if we are willing to be aware and listen to it so that's the first one the second one is sitting meditation when we talk about sitting meditation it's about sitting for example on a chair we are sitting and we are and you know, having our uh, and we can actually sit or in a right have have the back comfortably positioned on the on the back of the chair and of course sit upright and we can then once again have a, a something very similar to a body scan done except of course we are sitting and the other thing is you would be surprised is the walking meditation now walking meditation is is something which i personally haven't actually started imbibing it to the extent that i can talk about how i feel i'm still getting there but it is a form of meditation where even when you're walking your thoughts and of course your actions are so much in sync that it is a, a complete feeling of mindfulness that you are experiencing 
as you move how can we help children with mindfulness now this is a question which sometimes parents ask me and i think the first thing is how can we have to talk about how can uh, kids benefit from mindfulness the first thing would be more positive emotions more life satisfaction more compassion and overall well-being and it actually stimulates physical and emotional health in them so if we are to look at some of the strategies to plant mindfulness in them would be the first thing would be think of the acronym stop that is stop take a breath observe proceed now this is something which you can practice the moment you are up in the morning in fact even when your child is up in the morning or during meal times being more aware of what is in front what you're going to enjoy the texture the aroma of the food on what is it being served in for example the food that is served on a banana leaf it has got its own distinct flavor so the more and more we encourage this kind of thinking and mindfulness we are actually enabling our child to be a lot more aware about the world around them and themselves accepting yourself or accepting ourselves all of us none of us are perfect we have our flaws and just how do we i would say cope up with the flaws is a way of finding out how much more we can improve appreciate and be grateful about the fourth one is focusing on the breathing you know that is one area despite the fact that i i completely uh, i am very very appreciative about mindfulness but when it comes to breathing i think i need to be a lot more aware of my breathing so that i can become more mindful from the breath that i take in and take out do think about that and the next one is um i would say is uh, being compassionate how does how does mindfulness help us become more aware that is of course it increases the tolerance regarding distress yes you you some of you may be surprised but it definitely does and the second thing of course it's not about negating that there is a situation that is distressful no it is about accepting it's about how will you be able to tolerate it how can you handle the situation and for that you need mindfulness hence the fact that i mention here that it helps us tolerate and face distress a, a lot better than we would if we were not mindful the, the second one is being able to concentrate better when we are mindful we can definitely concentrate better because the more attention we would give to a single task what helps you to be more mindful for some it is music for some it is cooking whatever gives you a certain sense of pleasure that is also something i mean it, when i talk about pleasure it's not just pleasure for the pleasure's sake but in what way is it helping you move towards mindfulness being more aware of its benefits so if we talk about the basic practice here set aside some time so that you can have some time to meditate and once again practice your mindfulness be present let judgments pass like i said as much as possible aim to be non judgmental and of course be kind to your mind your mind requires the kindness that you show and remember practicing meditation helps immediate uh, helps us all immensely so making sure your posture your breathing your notice how much what all do you notice your gaze all that definitely matters when you are practicing mindfulness so what i would recommend here for all of you is please remember that mindfulness is not something that you need to consider as a practice for a specific time of your day it's about practicing as a way of life so that you are able to benefit from it in your personal and your professional journey